good afternoon everyone. Welcome to Ad America. For those who have never been here before, Ad America is the American Center under the US Embassy Jakarta. My name is Dina, I'm one of the e-guide here and I will be more than happy to answer all of your questions regarding Ad America. And now I would like to give you a glimpse of our upcoming events. So next we will have a presentation, Building Network Among Wonderful Women. This will be had on Friday, November 22nd, starting from 6.30 until 8.30 p.m. Please come and join us on Friday. And next, we will also have performance, The Americans, I'll Be Yours. This will be held on Thursday, November 28th, starting from 6.30 until 8.30 p.m. So for those of you who enjoy music, you don't want to miss this performance, so please come and join us on Thursday, November 28th. And we also have Education USA. So for those of you who wants to pursue a higher education in the United States, we have two advisors standing by to answer all of your questions regarding higher education in the United States. We are here every day starting from 1 p.m. until 9 p.m. And on Saturdays, we are here earlier starting from 10 a.m. And of course, this is for free. So please uh, just simply come and ask away. No appointment needed. And these are the highlights of our events and how to stay updated to our events. Simply visit our website at www.adamerica.or.id. Click register, enter your name and email address and you will get newsletter about our upcoming events. Just once a week and we won't spam you, we promise. And next, of course, we are very active with our social media. We have Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, Stellar, and also YouTube channel. And for those of you who still like to tweet, please help spread the love by tweeting to us to add Ad America. And don't forget to use the hashtag Ad America. And your tweet will appear on our live tweet wall on my left side here. And special for today's event, we also have a special hashtag. So please use the hashtag BeSociopreneur. And to begin today's event, I would like to invite Mr. Bennett Lowenthal, Acting Deputy Cultural Attaché, U.S. Embassy Jakarta, for the opening remarks. Thank you, Dina. Hello, everyone. Uh, minta maaf. Saya tidak bisa bahasa Indonesia, but who cares because this is at America, so I get to speak English. How many people are here for the first time? Okay, good. There is your source, or ask anybody about all the marvelous things that happen here. We hope to see you more and more. So today, we are here to learn. This is the first in a series about coaching for entrepreneurship. At hashtag be sociopreneur. This is the first session. There will be four more, I believe, on Wednesdays. Eva is going to talk about that, so I won't say too much. But the culmination of it is going to be uh, there will be winners who get to go to a boot camp and uh, that will be a very special experience. So I hope that this inspires you to participate in that. So in order to get you inspired, what better session could we have than a session with two success stories in this area? And not only are they success stories in their own right, but they are intertwined. And so they'll be able to talk about both sides of the win-win situation that uh, they find themselves in, in the case of Lemonillo. Let me just say very briefly, uh, by way of introduction, because they're going to talk about themselves, uh, and in, not because they're bragging, but because they want you to understand how they got to where they are. We're very proud to have them here because they both have a United States connection as well. Uh, Shinta Nurfauzia, who is the co-founder and CEO of Lemonillo.com, has been an entrepreneur since her teenage years, um, and she can tell you about that. Uh, her educational experience in the United States uh, 
came after getting her degree here in Indonesia and being a lawyer and a very successful one at that. And she went to Harvard University and got a master's degree in law. And that's very, very special. That's top of the top. And I know uh, it's quite an honor. And uh, Erika Dianasari Go is a very respected and important venture capitalist here in Indonesia uh, with her firm, of which she is a partner or a principal, uh, Alpha JWC Ventures. And she has had roles in business and consulting before this with a couple of very large, um, important companies in Indonesia dealing in uh, all kinds of matters that I'm sure she will talk about, everything from uh, person, uh, human capital, um, investing, all the things that venture capitalists do. And the, as I was mentioning about the connection, uh, Lemonillo.com is actually f funded in large part, or one of the key funders and promoters of its, in its early days was Alpha JWC Ventures. And so you, you'll be able to hear about that conversation or the conversations that led to this uh, agreement that this would be, that Lemonillo.com would be this wonderful idea, this marketplace for buyers and sellers of healthy natural products. Um, so you'll get to hear a little bit of the story. And hopefully your questions will provoke them and prod them to tell even more stories. And let's hope that these stories inspire you and help shape your dreams and give you some resolve to become involved in entrepreneurship. And to get really specific about what the Young Change Makers Social Enterprise Academy 2.0 Female Sociotechpreneur Edition Bootcamp is about. I'm looking for Ava. Where is? It, may, may I turn the floor over to Ava? Is with uh, www.campaign.com. They're organizing this, and she can talk about it in, in great detail. So please, Ava, over to you. And now for our MC today, please give a round of applause for Eva Nindia Kirana. Okay, hello everyone. Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam om swastiastu, namo buddhaya, dan salam kebajikan. Okay. Uh, Everyone, thank you for coming today. Uh, my name is Eva, uh, and it's my pleasure to welcome and hosting for today's event. Thank you so much for coming to our coaching class, Young Changemaker Social Enterprise Academy 2.0, Female Socio Techpreneur Edition. Please give applause for this project. Okay. I would like to say hi to everyone in American Corners. Hi, uh, from Universitas Muhammadiyah Yogyakarta from Universitas Andalas Padang, Universitas Tanjung Pura Pontianak, and we also live streaming on Facebook and happy watching everyone. We'd like to thank you for awesome partners from, yeah, okay, hello. Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, okay, uh, we'd like to thank for our awesome partners from YC Lee, our coaching class partner, Alpha GWC Ventures, Bootcamp Partners, Social Innovation Acceleration Program, and Impact Byte. Our community partners, Girls in Tech Indonesia, Kinara, and Exidic. And our media partners, Good News from Indonesia, Hipwi, Medcom ID, Ultimax, UMN TV, Kompas.com, Metro TV, and 103 Pop FM. Okay, everyone, before we start the amazing coaching class today, I'd like to invite Mr. William Gondokusumo to explain about the program for about the YCSE 2.0 program. Please give applause for Mr. William. Thank you, Eva. Uh, okay, hello everyone. Yes, thank you so much for coming here. We are very, very excited for this coaching cl clinic because like was mentioned just now, amazing partners. Right? This program can only work because of the partnership. First with Ad America, this amazing space. When I first saw this space, I, I was like, wow. How can it be in Jakarta? There's such a space they can use for free. 
you can't sell things on it, you can't solicit it, and you can only do social. I'm like, and who knows, it's not just a stage. They also do programs. So we partner with that. This 2.0 means there was a 1.0, which is still running. We'll share more about that later. It's also supported by YCLE, which is, um, you want to be part of the program. It's very easy, sign up, and you get start receiving a lot of amazing emails. Right? Alpha JWC. Uda pernah dengar nggak Alpha? Yeah? Kopi kenangan udah? Yeah? Gula udah? That's the reason we can get 18,000 coffee everywhere, right? Because they're supporting it, and not just with the money, but you can hear how they support, right? I mean, you know, the Indomie, ditugaskan. My sister makes me bring to Singapore every time I go there, so... <laughs> yeah, I'm taking photos later also. Right? And then, of course, later on for the bootcamp, yeah, we'll be sharing more about our partners and also media partners, which, of course, we need to publicize all this. So what is it? Why is this academy? Timeline. Right? What we believe is a comprehensive step-by-step -step process to publicize the idea of social entrepreneurship as a life choice, as a support. Because at the end of the day, a company with a social mission tends to amplify themselves, tends to increase HR, have better clients, have better funders and everything. So why not take the next step and look, explore social entrepreneurship? whether to start it, to support it, to join it, all this is possible. So we take it a step by step where you submit, there's coaching class, public voting, then there's a boot camp. Let me, go, let me deep dive into this. Coaching classes today is Wednesday, 2 p.m. For the three more Wednesdays in front of us, we have four coaching classes in total. In each of it, Alpha JWC will introduce one of their portfolio companies. In these portfolio companies, they'll go through a journey of how this happened, how the company started, their, so, their mission, their drive to be... Um, to get started is so hard already. But to get started and get funded, and not just get funded, but to have a viable business case, it's, it's amazing. And we have four coaching classes. This is the case study method. There's someone was mentioned, Harvard University is amazing. They invented case study methodology. So we're trying to replicate also four cases, the funder and the startup on the same stage sharing to you and also to the American Corners. Right? After these four coaching classes, which is free to everyone, we have a fully paid team building retreat. We love this for a few reasons. One, it's not just you yourself coming. Three of you in your team is funded. Startups depend on you coming together. It's not just a knowledge, it's not just an opportunity. It's whether you can decide to work together and tembuskan, to take and thin. So this, there's a lot of team building, there's a lot of capacity building, a lot of network and connections. Siap, amazing guy, also named William, but that's not the reason why. But they focus on social, social innovation, social impact. We are working very closely with them to create a curriculum that can really help your social enterprise grow. Yeah, and we'd like to also say something. We're, this year's edition is focused on female social techpreneurs. When you hear tech, langsung pikirnya apa? App, right? Dot coms. It's not just that. Right? As long as your startup uses tech to empower itself, uses tech to function, you can apply. Right? And to me, almost any business today has to have a tech strategy. If you don't have a tech strategy, think of one through these four coaching classes you can qualify to apply. Because it doesn't need to be implemented, you can plan to implement it. Right? There's a presentation day. Right? Most important, but not only, yeah, you have access to the US Embassy, which is, the network is in, in, incredible. They have YCD, they have YES, they have MCHAM, goes on and on, right? Alpha JWC, they're presenting four of their portfolio companies, but so much more. And they just closed their second fund, so they grew a lot bigger. So they're open to a lot more funds and ventures. Right? There's CIAP, Impact Buy, and there's also us. We're also inviting media. And we're also working on a few special surprises to make this even more exciting. Right? That one I can't share yet because it's still in discussion. Right? And then mentorship. It doesn't end there. The 10 winners for 1.0, the previous cycles, we're still mentoring them, we're still talking to them. And when we say mentor, it's not just a WhatsApp group, ask us questions. We're proactively asking for updates. And 
this stage, we will, make, we will give you a launch event right here. We'll work with you. We budgeted. So the 10 last year is from 10 different cities. There's a Plukota in Beda. They come to Jakarta, invited by the US Embassy at America, working with campaign to do their own launch events. We help you invite media. We help conceptualize everything. Right? How amazing is this, the opportunity? It doesn't end at the boot camp. That's only the start of it. Because after that, you have your own stage right here. Any content bagus for your social media. Last For the 1.0, where people who invited local governments, where people who invited their schools, where people invited potential clients. Right? So with this, this launch event is a, is a catalyst and it's also a focus to help you establish yourselves from an idea, a prototype, into an established startup with your own launch event. Right? With this, I would like to pass it back. Okay, I would like to pass it back to Eva to introduce our speakers who, is, who are amazing. I've been WhatsApping all my friends, come or watch it online because this is a conversation that we all work together to share with you. Right? And we're excited to hear what happens. You know? no, 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 no pressure. <laughs> Okay, thank okay. you very much. Thank you, Mr. William. Please give a round of applause for Mr. William. Okay, in a few minutes, we'll start the first series of our coaching class with Le Monilo and Alpha GWC Ventures. Are you excited? Okay, excited, right? Okay, in this coaching class, you'll learn the whole journey of the building up the core team, creating the prototype product, the social impact, and how to get the support. Okay, we will have uh, some quiz uh, in the end of the sessions. Uh, get the merchandise from us. Pay attention and don't forget to take notes from this coaching class. And then we'll make uh, this coaching class more interactive. Eh, sorry. Okay. We will make this coaching class more interactive, so please connect with us through Mentimeter. Uh, you can ask the question through at America Twitter. Your tweet will be displayed on the tweet wall over there and uh, through campaign for change ID app. Okay, and then uh, we provide you a worksheet, okay, uh, if you want to apply this program. So after this coaching class, you can exercise it with your team. If you want to join this program as well, this worksheet should be collected no longer than 15 January. You can complete this worksheet during the coaching classes, and then we have uh, four series of coaching classes to help you to prepare your application process. Okay, let's start the coaching class for today. I know everyone is today is ex it's very excited. I'd like to invite our amazing speaker today, the first one. She is the co-founder and co-CEO of Lemonilo. Lemonilo is a healthy lifestyle brand that provides the Indonesian market with healthy, affordable, and practical products. With a mission to make a healthy lifestyle accessible to everyone, Lemonilo is known as one of the nation's well-known customer tech companies. Please give her an applause for Sinta Nurfauzia. Yay. And then the next one. Uh, she's the partner at Alpha GWC Ventures, Indonesian leading venture capital firm, uh, where Lemonilo got the investment from. Expertise in talents, business transformations, and operational excellence. Prior to joining Alpha GWC Ventures, she was a general manager at MPM Group and spent seven years' experience uh, in talents and industry research at Egon Zender International. Please give a round of applause for Erika Diana Sarigo. Yay. Okay. How are you? Um, Sinta and Erika? Great. Good. Yeah, nice to meet you today. And before we start, let's watch the video from YC Lee Learns. You can also watch the other series on YC Lee website. So uh, please watch the first series. Developing the business model for your startup. There's going to be three learning objectives during this module. First, what is a business model? Second, what does scalability mean? And third, what is the essence of a great pitch? Fifteen years ago, investors expected startups to spend great amounts of time writing long business plans filled with forecasts that were unlikely to ever be true. Today, sophisticated investors expect startup founders to focus on developing a business model for their startup. 
Ideally, one that scales. A business model is the collection of assumptions that must be true in order for your startup to generate a consistent profit. These assumptions include a precise description of the customers you will engage, the problem you will solve for those customers, the features of the solution to that problem, the messages and channels you will use to connect to those customers, and the economics around what and how you will charge for your solution and what it will cost you to provide it. A scalable business model for your startup is one that not only enables the business to generate a profit, but one that is well suited to grow rapidly and ideally become more profitable as the business becomes large. Rather than assuming that you have all the answers about your scalable business model from the start, you as a smart entrepreneur today begin with the idea that you have hypotheses that must be tested through actual interactions with customers. It doesn't matter what you think. It matters what you can validate through hard data derived from actual customer interactions. The Lean Startup methodology, popularized by Steve Blank and Eric Ries, is one important way of going through this continuous process of experimentation and business model development. A Lean Startup approach to building your business pairs an iterative, experimental approach to developing an in-depth understanding of your customers and their needs and wants with a fast, flexible approach to building your product. The idea is that you build as little of your product as possible, test it with real customers, then make quick tweaks and changes to the product, and repeat. To communicate your scalable business model to potential investors and other audiences, you should maintain an up-to-date pitch or story you tell about your business. The physical manifestation of your pitch is a deck, usually 10 to 12 slides and no more, and as visual as you can make it. More important than the physical deck, though, is really developing a great story to tell. After all, there's going to be a lot of moments when you have the opportunity to pitch someone but won't happen to have your deck handy. Every great story has a beginning, a middle, and an end. The beginning is about setting the scene and introducing compelling characters to whom your audience can relate. The middle is about explaining a challenge that your main character faces. The end is about how your character resolves this problem in a satisfying way. Your pitch should unfold the same way. You need to start by explaining to investors who the user of your solution is. The more vivid a picture you can paint, the better. You then need to explain the incredibly frustrating or expensive problem that your user faces. A combination of anecdotes or case studies to make the problem seem real with data to explain the size of the problem is ideal. You need to end your pitch by showing how your solution solves this problem. And it's really important that you do this in the simplest terms possible. Finally, the epilogue to your story is explaining how you scale your business into a really big, interesting market. Okay. Uh, how's the video? Great. Okay. I think it's very amazing if we can learn about the Lemonilo journey. Uh, agree? Okay, uh, Sinta, could you please uh, share your experience to the all of the audience? Okay. Uh, sure, so is this the time where I get to present yeah. the deck? Okay. Present sure. yours. So, hello everyone. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Shinta. Um, okay, so I'm gonna start my presentation by so just by telling you who we are, essentially. So the three of us basically meet uh, when uh, we were studying. So Johannes uh, and I, we met while, while we were studying in Harvard. And then we got to, uh, to introduce to Ronald through a friend. So the three of us, we shared a common goal that we want to return to Indonesia once we finish our study and build the country. But we want to build a country through a space that we, were, we are really passionate about. So then we choose health. Why health? Each of us have a different reason for it, but particularly for me. Um, my family has a diabetic history, so I am always, always interested and passionate about the health space. So then, uh, when we decided to create Lemonilo, uh, we don't know what to do, right? So it was not even Lemonillo. The, the name, we, we didn't even know the name. So what we want to do at that time is just we want to create a startup. Okay, so we want to return to Indonesia. We want to create a startup. We want to be able to contribute through health space, a space that honestly we randomly choose 
based on our interests. Uh, okay, so it's not that random, of course, because you get to really research about um, the potential solution that you can execute in that particular sector. In, in the health space, we believe that Indonesians, in order to be a more productive country, uh, Indonesians need to be healthier. But uh, we don't think getting healthy or being in a healthy lifestyle is something natural for Indonesians to do. Our diet is essentially high cholesterol, <laughs> high in fat, high in sodium, high in sugar, high in everything. So we are not a naturally healthy country. Um, so how, why do you think Indonesians are not healthy? While it's not natural for us to consume healthy products. So based on our research, there are basically three problems. First, healthy products for most of us are expensive. It's cheaper to go to warung and then get nasi bungkus. So it's expensive. Second, we don't think as a country that healthy food is tasty. We think it's yucky. And third of all, we think it's difficult to get healthy products. What are actually healthy products? We don't even know what, it, what is it. So then we see that in order for us to be able to solve and help the country to solve health problem, we need to be able to solve these three problems. First, we need to make sure that healthy lifestyle is accessible for everyone through the creation of healthy products that are tasty, affordable, and also practical for everyday people. We're not talking about the rich people. We're talking about the everyday Indonesians that constantly need to consume cheap products. So if that cheap products keep on being inserted with bad preservatives, bad ingredients, then we're never going to get healthy as a nation. So then, the Lemonilo mission is to basically deliver healthy products that are affordable, tasty, and also practical. Okay, so that's a long goal. What to do? So what we do is first, we need to hire people to help the, fo the founders, right? So there are only three people. We cannot do everything. So we need to hire people. First, we decided on what is our minimum viable products. Are you all familiar with what is MVP? Right, okay. So I assume you are all familiar because I see some knots in here. So if, for those of you who are not familiar with my minimum viable products, so MVP is basically a prototype, a very, uh, an oversimplification of your product, it's, it doesn't have to be perfect, but it has to mirror your end products or what you dream your products could be. And you can uh, test it to people and then you can get the result. And that MVP uh, essentially has to be something fast, something that you can learn, something that you can get data from, and something that you can iterate. So in our case, we believe so creating like a real consumer goods product is not our MVP. We believe that our MVP is to prove whether Indonesians, is essentially Indonesians are essentially ready to consume healthy foods or not. So then we create a marketplace, a healthy products marketplace. So lemonlaw.com is our first MVP. We create our website, our lemonlaw.com in the span of two weeks only two weeks, to just see whether Indonesians want to purchase healthy products or not. So because our MVP is lamanilo.com, the first hire that we conducted is the product and technology team. The second hiring that we executed is the human resources team. Because why product and technology team? Because our MVP is lamanilo.com, it's the website. But we realize that in order for this company to be able to evolve into the shape that we want, we need to be able to hire great people. So we don't know how to hire people. We don't really have a background of hiring great people. So then we hire HR to help us hiring great people. 
And then when we create our prototype, the lemonilla.com, we asked ourselves who can be our first consumers. So our first or our low hanging fruits, we believe at that time, are uh, the urban female or diabetic people or people with uh, with access um, with uh, overweight people. Why? Because we believe that those are the people that are uh, in dire need of healthy products. Now, fast forward to three years. If some of you know probably Lemonilo products, the instant noodle, it's no longer consumed by only these people. It's consumed by healthy people, people who want to be healthy, people who don't care about getting healthy but heard about that getting healthy is schools, you know, all kinds of people. But we don't start our products by essentially saying that, hey, everybody can consume our products. No, we really conducted a laser focus analysis on who can be our first or our early adopters. And in our case, uh, based on our research, the three types of our early adopters are the one that you can read on the left. Oops. Yeah. Okay, so then the journey on uh, 2000 and October 2016, we launched Lamanilla.com. Uh, in 2017, after we launched Lamanilla.com, which is basically a healthy marketplace, we test launched our first product, which is our instant noodle. Because the dream of the company is to not become another, to not become another e-commerce or marketplace. Our dream is to be able to provide Indonesians with healthy products that are affordable, uh, accessible, and also practical. So then. We see the numbers in Indonesia. People in Indonesia, we love instant noodle. We see that instant noodle is something that we really need to consume every day. But we know that it's not healthy. So naturally, we want to go straight to the bottom of the problem. So that's why our first pr product is Lemonilo instant noodle. Fast forward to today, we basically have right now around 27 lines of products in three years. Uh, probably more than conventional FMCG companies that you see in the market. Uh, and in 2020, we are going to launch more products. But our product, our first product, is not perfect from the very first start. In September 2017, when we first launched our product, you see that it's just, you know, like a very low-end kind of product. The taste is not even like the one that you taste today in the supermarkets. It's something that we decided to launch fast, but we want to iterate fast. We want to get the data fast. In November 27, we do the second iteration. On April 2018, we, we did the third iteration. We iterate, 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 and finally today, you have the three products, the three instant noodle, that people are now known as, you know, the, the, uh, so I get a lot of message actually that say that, hey, you know what, thank you for creating the, the Lemonilo instant noodle, Lemonilo instant noodle saved my life because now, because now my family can get to consume instant noodle without having the guilty feeling. So that's basically what Indonesians want. We want our food to still taste healthy, but magically, we hope it could be healthier. So that's the job that we decided to do, and that's a job that we are passionate about. We really believe that if you want to start a company, you need to start a company that you are really 100%, 200% passionate about, because it's very difficult to do a company that you do half-heartedly. A lot of people do uh, startups wholeheartedly and they are still fail. Uh, La Monilo, it's not even our first company. This is our second company. Our first company fell. With the same people, we decided to launch another company. So um, it's not that, you know, the version that you see from La Monilo today, it's not the one that we launched when we first have this company. So it's very important that you're really passionate about your products, that you really like your products, that you can evangelize your products, so then you can really hear 
what are the critics to your products and I trade from it. So how do we use technology, right? So what set us apart from conventional FMCG company? Because now you see the company itself have evolved from what was a healthy marketplace when we first launched it. Now we, can, we became a consumer tech company. So we know that in order for us to be able to excel in the, uh, the consumer tech space, we need to leverage technology. So every time we launch a product, different from other FMCG company, we launch it online. We really take a look at the data and the comments for each of our products. The ability to launch our products online and within our own platform allow us to launch products effectively. If you have to launch your products offline or through supermarkets, you have to pay initial, initial money. You know, like you have to pay the fee for the supermarkets. Now with our model, we don't have to pay anyone. We just need to launch and pay attention to the data. So it's also very important for you, if you uh, want to launch our MVP, try to launch it with very minimum costs. Don't spend your money or your pot uh, on the first get-go because you need the money to to continue your business and to iterate your products. We also now try to build our technology to capture the data in our offline markets because, you know, technology is very important, but Indonesia is still a very offline nation. Only 10% of our retail happens online. The rest 90% happens still offline. The mission of Lemonilo is not to be the next e-commerce. Our mission is to healthify Indonesia, to create accessible, healthy lifestyle. So we are pretty agnostic on the channel. So we don't care whether we sell our products through our online platform or our, off or our offline uh, supp um, supermarkets. But what we need to make sure is we want to be able to capture the data, the sales data, the consumer data, in each of the channel. Okay, so this is basically the reason why we believe that what we are trying to do in Lemonilo is basically a way above the profit, way above the money. We believe that if we are to be successful in doing Lemonilo, in delivering healthy products for the nation, then we are able to help the country to be a more productive country. Because there are top three causes of death in Indonesia, stroke, heart disease, and diabetes, and it's all related to lifestyle. So our decision to be healthy or not, it's much more than just, you know, yourself. It's bigger than that. Even our decisions to be unhealthy has caused Indonesia to, you know, pay 400 million US dollar to take care of the sick people. And healthy food, we believe, is the obvious solution because you are what you eat. So we want, uh, so all the Lemonello products have this three DNA. It's all natural, it's affordable, and it's also practical. So that's it for me. Uh, one of, uh, so last from me is that don't worry uh, about your MVP. Don't worry too much. Launch fast, iterate, iterate fast, and learn from it. And make sure that you have the right partners to continue your journey. And be passionate about your products. Don't ever dive into something that you are not passionate about. Entrepreneurship is very, very hard. And it's going to be harder if you're not passionate about it. Thank you. Yay. Wow. It's a very incredible journey of Lemonilo. Like uh, everyone can eat instant noodle without feeling guilty right now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll start the talk show right now. Um, we will make more interactive about the talk show. Now, please, uh, everyone, you can uh, open your cell phone. And then uh, open the browser and please type menti.com. We'll have some interactive question and answer with you all. Okay.
Where's the menti? Yeah. Okay, and go to menti.com and use the code 280061. Okay. Everyone's in? <laughs> we'll wait. Okay, one join. Okay. For the first questions, does the educational background of the team influence in forming a strong team? Okay, what do you think, guys? If it's you agree, please choose yes. And if you, if you not agree, you can choose no. Okay, now back to our amazing speaker today. Uh, what do you think about these questions? Do you think it is important, uh, the educational background? Maybe I'll start from Erika first. Oh, okay. Uh, perhaps I can uh, <coughs> present my thoughts as a, as a VC, as an investor. My view on this is a yes and no, actually. But it's more to yes. Let me explain why this is yes. Uh, yes, education background of the team, and especially uh, we as a VC, we educational background of the founder is, a very, is one of the key aspects that we consider as well. But it's not like uh, whether they are coming from the top school, or what major that they have, whether they know the business they are coming from, the business and finance background, it's not that one. But it's more on <coughs> how complementary the team is, um, the subject that they learn, and also the, the school they attend. It's not just about the symbol, but to show how competitive someone is when they were still very young. Because uh, I do believe um, whom that, uh, where we study and what, uh, what kind of students are peer that we were uh, studying together eventually shape who we are, right? And also uh, the major and also the background and the school, it give a complementary background to one another. It's uh, perhaps it's, uh, concurrently that Sinta and Johannes come from the same alma mater, which is Harvard, but they come from, come across from a different uh, background, different subject where the other co-founder also complement the subject as well. He's coming from a finance background. So I would say, yes, educational background is one of the, I would, I would say it's a things that we really consider for certain reason, but it's not like a specific background influence the successfulness of uh, founders. Okay, thank you, Erika. And then, Sinta, what do you think? Okay, so if you really take it into a granular level, I want to share with you that my background, my formal background is business law. I'm not coming from a tech background or from um, FMCG background, from a consumer tech background. So I agree with Erica that it's very important to find partners that, co that can, co can complement you. Uh, but there's something um, that can show that no matter what background you have, the investors will love you if you have a product market fit. So, if you think you don't have the background, um, I think the strategy is to make sure that you do your prototyping very effectively, very low cost, and then you come to the investors when you already have a proven prototype product market fit and then you show that your that your current company structure is actually strong enough to go to the next level so usually um, this probably I don't know uh, this probably in my um, opinion and based on what uh, I experience is able uh, to give another perspective to your investor okay it's a very great insight. So uh, it's all about the proven uh, product, yeah? It's uh, just you can prove and then uh, you can go back to your team with yeah something like it's very incredible for the products. Okay, uh, ready for the next questions? Okay, um, the next question is... Okay, what's the biggest challenges of creating the prototype product? What do you think? Okay, you can type your answer, and probably I'll ask to Sinta first. How do you processing your feedback from the market test? I think. You. Yeah, you should answer first. 
uh, how do you processing the feedback from the market test? Or what is the biggest challenge of creating the prototype product? Right, okay, so, <laughs> kamageran hakiki. Uh, okay. <laughs> so the biggest challenge of creating the prototype product in my experience is actually to launch imperfect product. So you really want your product when you launch it to be, you know, like perfect. So usually founders, when we want to launch our products, we keep on making it perfect and then we lose time. So what we learn is it's very important to just, you know, let the market speak. Um, so in our case, we launch Lamoni Law Instant Noodle with just like a plastic, transparent <laughs> packaging, far from perfect. We make sure that the content is safe. Uh, very minimum investment, we launch it. And once we get the comments, comments from everything, from Instagram, you should give it to your friends. If your friends like it, they tell it to other people. If your friends don't like it, they tell it to you and also to other people. So you get more feedback, so feedback for ev from everything. And then you base, so what we basically do is we have like a lock system uh, for this feedback. And then like the first, the top three, the major feedback we try to iterate. So for example, from the packaging. So, when, uh, so we iterate that. Uh, the seasoning for, for the instant noodle, we iterate that. The texture of the instant noodle, we iterate that. And we iterate it over time. And even the pricing for the product, it's not perfect. Uh, when we first launch it, it's still very expensive. Once we get to the volume that uh, po that is possible for us to decrease it, we decrease it. So we I trade everything. Okay, this is uh, interesting. Like uh, the audience say that lack of money. Okay, uh, so could you please share to us like uh, the first uh, step, like or the first um, experience of creating your prototype product with lack of money? Okay, so. Um, so one of our tech, uh, one of our founders, uh, he's a tech founder. So it's quiet, um, not expensive for us to launch a website. Uh, but if you do not have a tech founder, don't don't use website, for example, to be your to be your MVP. If you want to create a marketplace, for example, what is supposed to be the first MVP, this most simple free MVP to not sorry, if you want to launch a product, the most simple free MVP to launch your product, what is it? Do you think? What is the platform? Anyone can answer me? Social media, exactly. Free, right? And then you get to get real comments from your user. Before social media era, you need money to launch your products. Now you don't need money. So it's basically based on your creativity. So lack of money, I don't think it's fair to say it right now. Okay. Uh, and then uh, to Erika, like from the investor side, what kind of product that you think can be scaled up? Okay, um, the product that can be scaled up, maybe this is the right opportunity for me to uh, and so what is the most misconception of most of the entrepreneurs would like to hear from the investor when they come to a, uh, to pitch, right? Mostly they think about if they have the good and right product market fit, then that will be okay. But actually, based on our experience, there's never been a right product market fit. What we would like to see is the clarity, the clear product market fit. Uh, you need to be clear on which segment that you're going to serve, what is the value proposition in your product. It doesn't have to be right at the moment because a startup journey is a journey to validate your thesis, right? To unlock the uncertainty from one stage to the next stage. As long as you have the clarity in what's the uh, product value proposition and what's the market segment that you serve, it will help you to focus. In, in your focus, and also uh, you will be efficient in uh, you know spending your money, uh, uh, think about the uh, strategy. Even if it doesn't work, then you can, can keep iterate and then uh, goes to what is the next clarity. So it doesn't have to be the right at the moment, right? But if it's not clear, then it's easily to get distracted. I would not tell a lot of distraction when building a startup, right? Uh, so 
so so so be clear. If it is wrong or right, doesn't matter because um, it's your journey to, uh, to 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 validate uh, from what stage to the next stage. So be clear and focus. Okay, that's just a message like be clear and focus. Okay, uh, we'll move to the next questions. Okay. Okay. Access to get investors. What do you think, uh, the audience? Is it very hard, moderate, or easy? Let's see the result first before we're going to the talk. Okay. <laughs> Okay, anyone wants to answer? Okay, I think it's uh, hard. The answer is hard. Okay, uh, maybe I start from Erica first. Um, where the answer is hard, like what makes it difficult to access to funding? Um, actually, you should ask in first because I don't think uh, Lemon Nilo Fund is hard <laughs> <laughs> to find investors. <laughs> Uh, but uh, I kind of like understand why most of the potential entrepreneur thing is hard. Actually, if you ask uh, whether it's easy to get the access to investor nowadays, it's not. It's a very easy. Perhaps like a five years ago, it's hard because uh, first of all, the uh, the information about how to get fund is a very limited by then, and number of VC, number of independent VC, number of information is very very limited. But nowadays, there's a lot of uh, you know community builder, a lot of uh, uh, information and access to this kind of event, which will educate and also with uh, give you the opportunity to get to know about how to get fund. That's number one, and also. Which potential investor that you would like to pitch? Number a large number of information out there. You can also browse each of the VC. Uh, there's a lot of association. You can talk to the same fellow entrepreneurs as well. But mostly, uh, uh, an early investor, uh, early uh, entrepreneur, they uh, they do it uh, not quite right. So they go to investor first without really knowing, without really clear on what they build. Actually, a really good entrepreneur, they should uh, get more mentorship for the same fellow entrepreneurs so that they can learn from their journey as well. So when you pick the right investor, you should know what you would like to expect from this investor. It's not like the investor telling you, uh, because we are an investor after all, it's not like someone who tells you, you should go here or there, uh, this is your strategy. You are the entrepreneur, you are. You should be the one who really know uh, how to get there as well. We would like to empower and then growing together with you. So it is, a, it is it's not hard actually. <laughs> so they, if they want to get the investment, so they could uh, go to your office and talk to you and pitch or... What? Or waiting for some events uh, for them to pitch or what, Miss Erika? Uh, of course, uh, if you go to our, um, to our website, uh, there's, uh, uh, you can find the information how to pitch to Alpha. You can drop your email. We are very, very responsive. We are one among the VC who are very responsive. Uh, and uh, because one of the vision that we would like is the, to, uh, to pay, uh, uh, to, to, to give, uh, to make this ecosystem growing as well. So we want to be one among the players who uh, 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 play a significant role. Okay, thank you for the information. And now move to Sinta. How do you reach the potential investors? And uh, do you use the elevator pitch or, uh, or something every time you meet everyone or potential, your potential investors? So I think um, I really agree with Erica. I think like uh, the early stage um, entrepreneurs so when you want to get in board with early stage um, investors it's not really it's going to be very difficult if you think that okay you go to investors office and then you get money to say yes or uh, or or get a yes or no answer right away i think what what in uh, investors want is someone that can that they can trust right so that's essentially uh, the type of re uh, relationship that we want to have as human beings, right? So trust. So how can investors trust us? So you come to them, probably not for investment per se, but for mentorship. 
So when we first talked with Alpha, it was for our first company, and we didn't even talk about investment. We got to introduce to be introduced to Alpha through a friend of ours who already got invested by them. And we talk, and basically, they do mentorship for us for free. <laughs> That's awesome. And the relationship kind of built from there. And when we have product market fit for Lemonilo, uh, it's, something, it's something natural for us to see uh, Alpha as our prospective investors and probably uh, quite natural for them to see us as, peop as a group of people that they want to invest as well. So um, if, if you just see uh, investors in terms of money, what you will get is basically cheap money. You know, like cheap money is basically when money is just money. Um, you have to know that any numbers will never be enough. But when you get smart money, means you also can have that relationship involved into an educational one, into more than just money, um, like Alpha. They help us more than just the money. They help us even for recruitments. I talk constantly with Erica in terms of recruiting the right people. She gets to tell us, this is the... This is, we think, this person is great to you. This person can take you to the next level. This is like a really, you know, like a real relationship that happened with us with Alpha. So if it's just money, you know, like money sent to your bank, that's it. And what is the purpose of that kind of money? Yeah, the capacity building is very important for every entrepreneur. Okay, I agree. And before we move to the question and answer sessions from the audience and from the American Corners, last question from, uh, from me uh, for Miss Erika. In this era today, like uh, digital technology is very growing and the market conditions are changing. But conventional business and digital entrepreneurs have the same opportunity uh, to get the investor as well. Seeing this condition according to Alpha GW Ventures, what percentage of digital entrepreneurs get investment and what percentage of conventional business get the investment? Do you have the percentage or? What is, uh, uh, would you please repeat? Yeah, the, the percentage of uh, the business, the conventional business that get the investment and the digital entrepreneur or digital business get, get the investment. Like the startup, digital startup, like that. Mm. Well, uh, for the exact number, I would not tell what is the exact number uh, because uh, it's quite broad. But if we take a look at our investment, for example, I would say uh, among our portfolio companies, uh, well, 100% of it is use, uh, using the technology uh, eventually. But uh, I would say. Uh, 70 to 30 percent. 30 percent is a new consumer, no new consumer, which is not coming from the uh, product technology first, but they are uh, ramping up and, and then uh, empower their product using the technology. So 70 percent is for the technology tech company. Uh, yeah, technology, tech and zip tech. Okay, great. And we move to the question and answer sessions. Uh, is there any question from the American Corners? Or from the Facebook Live? And for the audience, if you want to have a question, please raise your hand. Oh my God. Okay, two. If the American Corners have a question, please raise your hand and say it. Okay, from American Corners first, yeah? Where is it from? From Unan. No? No questions? <laughs> okay. From the audience first? Yeah? In the back? Okay. Uh, hello. Uh, I would like to ask question uh, for Sinta from Lemonilo. Uh, Earlier, you said that uh, your first uh, business is uh, failed, right? If I'm not mistaken. So I want to ask, like, uh, why why did the first business is fail, and uh, what are the things that you learn from that failure that you can apply to uh, Lemonello now? 
Okay, thank you. Mention your name, please. Uh, Vanessa. Uh, Vanessa. Okay. Probably you can answer. Tas. Thank you, Vanessa, for the question. Okay, so uh, when the three of us met, uh, we launched uh, a doctor's directory. So that was our first company. So after um, approaching each other for around six months, we decided to return to Indonesia, got our first investment, and then our first product, our first company was Consula. I don't know whether you know Consula or not, but Consula is basically Indonesia's first doctor's directory. Uh, and I can say that it's failed. Failed not because we don't have users. So even right now, we still keep our a consular website open because it's already half uh, users and members so it just manages by itself uh, so the the users are growing but we don't see any monetization from it so when we say that our first company failed what we mean is we think that consula gives people solution but that solution is not um, better or it's not great enough because it doesn't make people willing to pay for it, you know? So that essentially what I learned. So what is the essence of creating a company? Creating a company, uh, creating a startup, being an entrepreneur, essentially is about solving other people's problem. So if your solution is bigger, better, then more people get help, feel help, and it allow them to remove their pain points. So more people, then more, more user, more money, right? The solution have to be so good, so beneficial, that people are willing to pay for it. So when you first try, or when we first try to create Lemonilo, we don't even think about, okay, whether this product is in a perfect condition or whether it's in a perfect pricing point. What we think is, can our product solve people's pain points? So if it's a yes, then no matter how much, how much that you charge, as long as it solves people's problem, you're gonna be able to charge them anything. So that's essentially the, lear the learning curve that I get from uh, my first company. Okay. Okay, I got the information that there's a question from Untan. Okay, Untan. Could you please say hi and ask your questions? Give us your name and Say your question from who? in entrepreneurship and what principle should uh, should we hold in starting entrepreneurship? And that's a question for me. Where, hello? Uh, where you question for Sinta or Erika? Uh, Mrs. Sinta. Mrs. Sinta. Okay, do you get the questions? Uh, how do we a woman uh, passionate in some entrepreneur, right? The second one, could you please repeat your questions? The second part. Uh, um, what principle should uh, should we hold in starting entrepreneurship? What principle? Yeah. So, um, so your question was, um, how do we as women get passionate about entrepreneurship, and what principle should we hold? as entrepreneur. 
Um, so I think I'm gonna speak regardless of the gender, right? <laughs> because it's not it's not only women's problem to to find passion in entrepreneurship. I think it's everybody's problem. So how do we find passion? It's a, it's a question that I'm I'm gonna try to answer it, but so. So how do I find passion? If I reflect in my own journey, I find my passion based on my own personal background. So my own personal background, what do I care about as human being? What, and what do I think um, that is gonna make my life worth doing more than just the money? So that's basically the essential. So how do you find passion? It's gonna be based on your own personal journey. So as entrepreneurs, um, what I suggest other, other fellow entrepreneurs is find something that you are really excited about. Find that uh, ideal world that you want. And imagine in that ideal world of yours, what is the uh, spectrum? What are needed in them? what are needed in your ideal world and what you cannot find. And it's going to be great if you could be the one that make it happen. So that's how to find passion, I think. And what is the principle? I think, um, so a lot, a lot, a lot of principle. It's like asking, like, what is your principle as human being? Um, but I think one Entrepreneurs need to have integrity. So why integrity? Because you cannot solve a problem by creating another problem. So if I wish for every entrepreneur, so when you focus your energy and your life to solve a problem, it's not going to cause another problem. The world has so many problems, don't create one. So that's integrity. Uh, integrity also includes don't cheat your investors and your partners. We hear scary stories like that. Uh, so don't do that. Um, and the third, uh, the third of all, integrity also, also means that you're not going to leave your company in the middle. Entrepreneurship is very hard. We hear a lot of entrepreneurs who just stop. So your solution, your company, it's going to be stuck when you decided it's going to be stuck. So my experience show me that when your first company fail, it doesn't mean that you're stuck. I get to start La Monilo. We get to start our second company still with the same founders. Our first investor, we are the only uh, investee, we are the only company from that investor who came to our first investor and returned their money. That's integrity. It doesn't mean that when you, you, when you have investors, you get to spend it like, you know, not conscious about it, like just spend it, no. Because you, you, see, you need to see, having integrity means that you need to see everything as opportunity for us to contribute, uh, to create a better world. And entrepreneurs need to be dreamers. Uh, only if we can dream high enough and stay true stay passionate to your dream, then you can really make it come true. Okay, thank you, Sinta, for the answer. And after this, there will be a question from UMY, Universitas Muhammadiyah Yogyakarta. Okay. Please say your Hi. name. Hi. And the question for who? Sinta or Erika? Hello. Hello. Hi. My name is Padilla Nuri Nabi Afro, Universitas Muhammadiyah Yogyakarta. Uh, I want to ask uh, Miss Miss Sinta uh, about about the limonil. I have seen the in the limonil website that the price of the instant milk of the urine is six thousand rupees. Yes, right. And I want to ask. So, 
Thank you. Okay, thank you. The question is all about the pricing strategy. How do you see that it's uh, affordable for everyone? So thank you. Um, so when you want to create a product, you need to be able to make sure who is your target market, right? So La Monilo target market is not the entire 265 million of Indonesians. We realize that what we produce, what we offer to the market, it's still not able to cater, to cater the entire Indonesian population. So La Monilo right now dreams or aim to cater around 80 million of Indonesian, which is in the middle and affluent market. Uh, so the minimum uh, minimum salary of those market is 4 million rupiah. So with 4 million rupiah, they are able to buy, for example, like Taboto. So they are able to purchase Lamonilo. So expensive or not, it's going to depend on your target market. If your target market uh, is someone or is people with a salary of 10 million rupiah, you're not going to be able to, to sell a service for 100 million, you know? But there's a lot of service in Indonesia that costs you more than 100 million rupiah. Uh, and they, are, they make a very great company. So affordability, in our case, our, in our ideal world, in Lamonilo's own eyes, we want our product, we want to be able to create a product that max uh, only 30% more expensive. But we will never decrease the quantity because we want to achieve the price. So, so, so sorry, the quality over the price. So quality is still number one. Uh, in our volume right now for the instant noodle, uh, we are able to cater only 80 million uh, Indonesian people because we are only able to price it in 6,700. Is 6,700 expensive? Sure, for some people, but for some other people, nope, it's not expensive. So it really depends on who is your target market. Okay, now back to the audience here. You have any questions for, yeah, yeah, this one. Okay. Um, should I sit down or stand up? Stand up, okay. it's okay. Thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Indra. I have a question for Erika. Um, you mentioned about nurturing the ecosystem of uh, entrepreneurs here. So my questions will be, a, in terms of Alpha itself, what is your strategy in nurturing the uh, entrepreneurs ecosystem here, especially in Jakarta? And if you have some, then uh, who are the key partners that you deem fit for uh, this strategy? That's it. Okay, perhaps. Okay, uh, perhaps the first question, right? How we would like to uh, give an impact to grow the entrepreneurship uh, in, in in this ecosystem, right? Okay. Uh, since we are since our first inception, we are uh, we are keep uh, working together with our partners. Of course, we cannot uh, uh, mention each of the partners. Uh, um, so, uh, first and foremost, we have a uh, an event that we call uh, Alpha Leader Series. In uh, which uh, we held every quarter. In each of the Alpha Leader Series, uh, we also invite our uh, entrepreneurs as well, and also entrepreneurs from uh, non our portfolio company. What we would like to do with this, because we would like to give an impact to this entrepreneur, who are uh, who are the participants, are the people who are aspiring to be the entrepreneur, or the current uh, uh, startup uh, startup founders to be. So uh, with this sort of uh, activity and movement, we hope that we can uh, give uh, uh, give uh, thoughts, uh, and sharing to the potential co-founders. And we also support some of the governments as well, uh, some of the ministry in their uh, movement, in their uh, startup uh, 4.0, in their a lot of movement in the digital technology as well. So uh, we are hoping that uh, we are growing from our investment, from our portfolio companies, and we would like to share back and to give back to the uh, a potential entrepreneur to create more entrepreneurship uh, in uh, this ecosystem. Okay, is there any questions? Yeah. Am I allowed to ask two questions? 
It's okay. So first for Miss Erica. So what kind of return of investment is acceptable for social entrepreneur? Do you wish that social entrepreneur have ROI, an immediate ROI in one year or two years? Or it is take a longer time for us to have the return of investment? And second for Miss Sinta, how did you find the right marketing channel to advertise your product? Is it more effective to advertise your product by, let's say, celebrity endorsement by Instagram, or just right segmentation by Facebook advertisement? That's all my question. What's your Thank name? You. Matilda. Okay. Thank you. Maybe I would like to answer first. Our criteria of seeing the investment, right? Regardless whether this is a social entrepreneur or any kind of practical, we uh, say it like a three P plus one. So people is a product, uh, people, and also uh, potential. Uh, all are equally important. So people meaning that, like I said, we would like to see who are the entrepreneur, who are the co-entrepreneur. If it is uh, one person or two person, who are the background, and why uh, why they building now, and then seeing more on the high level mission and also background as well to see whether uh, they are able to drive this. Because uh, building a company is not only building a product, but building this as an organization as well, where the, the entrepreneurs are able to attract uh, the future talents to go within together. So that's the people aspect. For the product aspect, I have mentioned earlier, it's on, on the product prototype. What, what actually they build, what the cause of the, or the mission or the purpose that they care. So what is the real product, whether it's a solution or a movement or is a, is a, a new way uh, to deliver the a product that already in the market. So what is the real product here uh, to serve the purpose that they build, right? And also the potential. Yes, the product is clear. Uh, they also pretty clear in which segment that they are uh, going to serve. But how big is the potential? How big it can be? how much the impact they, they can create uh, by building this. And the last one is also important as well, but it's more technical in terms of uh, how we assess a potential investee. Uh, because we are a VC company, we are a venture capital that we uh, manage a fund. So return of investment is also one of the key important aspect. So on the technicality, we would like to see uh, how much they are currently raised, right? And for, this, uh, for the amount that they raise, what is the proceed, and also how much is the current valuation. And we would like to see more on the numbers. Uh, so for example, uh, it's really depend on the vertical. For example, what is the metric that they are currently use? If they don't have the revenue yet, at least what is the not stock metric, whether uh, it's a number of users, number of engagement. Basically, the key important and not stock metric for each of the particular uh, business or uh, a product that they build. So we would like to see on that and see how is the potential. And if the, there's a revenue, of course, we would like to see the unit economic. So it's not necessarily like return of investment because at least that's a company or social entrepreneur. It's not like, a, it's, it's not designed to be a profitable soon. Right? So it's unlike the traditional business. So it has to be sustainable. Sustainable meaning that it has to reach a, a certain scalability uh, to start giving the profitability. But of course, the bottom line is a very important. That's why unit economic is also one of the key aspects that we would like to see. Okay, so um, what is the most effective marketing channel? Uh, so I don't know for your business, but for our business, uh, we basically test everything. So we, uh, so as with everything in the company, what we do is we prototype, iterate, learn from it, and scale when it's possible. So with marketing, we test every channel, uh, every marketing channel possible. Celebrity endorsement, social media, social media as in Facebook group, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, um, Instagram, we also um, test TV commercial, built in, so we test everything. And uh, it, when it's possible, we put tracker uh, and measure which one of those uh, marketing channel that is most effective for us and scale on that. So um, I think uh, there's no right answer for every business, it's different. 
uh, my suggestion for you is to test everything in small scale. Okay, uh, we have more questions from UMY. Okay, is there any questions? Please mention your name and mention uh, your ask questions for Erika or Sinta. Hello. Hello. My name is Roger Manal and I'm from Full Universal Mahalia, Tokyo Yama. I'm going to ask you to give a question for Ms. Sinta about the Mahalia And here is more into the tragedy on how you know the Mahalia here. What is your common strategy, strategy to gain a lot of people to do? I'm sorry, we're not clear enough. Uh, your voice, could you please mention, uh, repeat your questions clearly yes. and uh, for slowly? The what is your common strategy to gain a um, lot of people to be trusted with your social media? Like your first strategy when you started to use Instagram and to promoting a uh, system. What is your first or first plan or strategy to use Instagram as your promotion? So, what is your current strategy on? Yeah, what is your uh, common strategy when you start to promote your memorial first on Instagram? What is your I don't get, We don't get your... <laughs> what's your current strategy on? Uh, how, how did you gain a lot of people to be to like the Instagram that already got 100,000 followers? How, how, what is your strategy to gain a lot of people to, to follow your company on Instagram of memorial? How, how, what is the strategy to gain a lot of people? Sorry, can you repeat that? Is, okay. it, is it how to increase followers in social media? Yeah, kind of that. Yeah, kind of that. What is the first plan? Yeah, we know that there are a lot of people using Instagram, and how how you target uh, that everybody that follow your Instagram right now? How you target that? How you gain they are? How you gain all of that? Instagram, Instagram strategy to sell the products, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. So, so okay. So, so I think. So, so please correct me if I'm wrong, but I think your question is, what is your current social media strategy to sell products? Okay. So I, I'm gonna assume that it's the question. <laughs> so, <laughs> So if that is your question, uh, and I'm sorry if I'm wrong, uh, so what is, so the strategy to, se to sell products is to basically, in social media, to mix between hard sell and soft sell. So our, so our online marketing team, we don't say it's online marketing. We say our, for that division in Lemonilo, we say that they are the content marketing. Because we believe, for particularly for social media, everything is about the content. So if you see Lamonilo social media, particularly the Instagram, because that's the question, right? So the Instagram, so we mix between the content. Content means that you're not selling the product, but basically you educate the market. We mix between uh, that, the content, the education, and the hard sell, basically, uh, informing our user of the promotion of new products and everything is basically wrapped under the content media so it's very important that you also give value to your followers your Instagram followers not only expecting them to purchase your products but also how to give them value to educate them so the idea of Instagram or any social media 
uh, or anyone that is worth following is to basically how can I be more knowledgeable by following this person or this company. So understand that, that that is the perspective of every user. Only if your social media account is worth following, then they are going to follow you. Otherwise, they don't care about you. So try to make sure that your social media channel is valuable to your target followers. Okay, thank you. Uh, and we have a question from Campaign App. Uh, how important is the gender equality in uh, building a startup? Probably the question is for you two, for Erika and Sinta. What do you think? How important is the gender equality in building a startup? Okay, so, so gender equality. So in La Manila, what we do is basically we don't care about the gender. If you are great for the job, then we pick you, regardless of your gender. Um, so, for example, we just hired someone who got pregnant. We don't see, for example, so why people are scared of hiring women, right? Because, one, the company, or essentially conventional company, is scared that by investing their time and energy in women, women can one day just say, bye-bye company, I'm going to be a full-time mother, right? But, so, so understand that, honestly speaking, that's going to be the perspective of any company. But I think what companies should do and what we are trying to do as company is to make sure that we put the right um, regulation in place to make sure that women can still blossom uh, regardless of their family condition. So once we put that kind uh, of regulation in place, then I think women or men, regardless of the gender, can blossom in the company. So back to the question, how important is gender equality in startup? I think it's very important, as important as we don't we don't care what gender you are as long as you're able to deliver and you pass all the tests, you pass the interview, then we're going to hire you. Okay, then perhaps from a physical perspective, uh, if I can change a bit the question, it's not uh, so much about the importance of gender equality, but we never face the gender uh, in, in, in assessment, in, in, in any kind of bias, uh, the way we view a company, right? The way we view a potential investing company as well. So, for example, like uh, uh, a VC company is well known as to be a very, you know, long hours. Uh, it's not really friendly for a work-life balance. But the fact is that our firm is currently, I think, sixty percent is a female. Uh, we didn't put investment team and non-investment team as well, and uh, we invest in a company uh, that happened to have a lot of. Uh, female co-founder as well. So uh, we don't really use the, pender, uh, the gender bias in our assessment. And in fact, uh, we do really see with the presence of uh, females in the key management uh, or in the, in, in the, in, in the co-founder's level, it will affect, uh, it, can, uh, it can be more efficient, it can attract more uh, talent as well. So perhaps that I can, uh, I can comment. Okay. We have one more question from the audience who wants to ask. Okay, yeah. Uh, saya bertanya dalam bahasa Indonesia, nanti silahkan dijawab in English. Uh, untuk Miss Erika, apakah minat untuk Alpha melakukan apa? Uh, investment itu hanya pada beverages, food and beverages sektor atau ada portfolio di sektor yang lain, terutama sektor agri, uh, peternakan, perikanan, pertanian begitu. Kemudian untuk Mbak Sinta, uh, saya tadi cek websitenya. Kemudian untuk kerjasama dengan UKM itu memakai model uh, inventory led model ya. Jadi uh, UKM consignment ke gudangnya Lemonilo. Uh, saya pernah baca bahwa model itu sudah ditinggalkan dan lebih memilih kepada model marketplace di mana seller langsung kirim dari masing-masing warehouse-nya. Saya jadi ingin tahu kenapa memilih model uh, inventory led 
karena bagaimanapun proses inbound, outbound, kemudian warehouse management itu juga costly setahu saya. Uh, mohon penjelasannya, terima kasih. Okay. Terima kasih. Maybe I can quick answer the first question. Um, yes, uh, we, are, we are not only interested in the FMB. Uh, as a VC, we are an independent VC. What this mean? We are sector agnostic. So we don't uh, only invest in the particular practical, so for example, only fintech or only uh, software as a services. If you take a look at our investment, we invest in the broad range of uh, industry, actually, from a fintech, software as a services, media, and also in terms of consumer, we invest in food, food and beverage, we also invest in the agriculture. So, no. We not only invest in the uh, FMB business, we are sector agnostic. As long as uh, the potential investing company can meet uh, our criteria, like I mentioned before, uh, is a strong uh, founders, a strong founding team, and also have the right, uh, have a clear product, and also is a, can serve a big potential market, and also uh, can be a potential investment, uh, that can be uh, uh, our interest. If I'm not mistaken, we have a coaching class with Tani Hub, one of your portfolio company, right? From agriculture sector. So uh, you can uh, come to our next coaching class with Tani Hub. Okay. Then question for Sinta, your cooperation with small medium enterprises. And now we're not continue or okay. what? So uh, there's going to be a big change, big iteration in 2020. Uh, with regard to our platform. So we're gonna leave the inventory model, we're gonna leave the marketplace model. There's gonna be a new model, uh, never been done before in Indonesia, uh, but you have to wait in 2020, I cannot tell you. But, uh, so I'm gonna share with you what is the possible uh, partnership with Lamonilo, with, um, between Lamonilo and uh, mediums, uh, small medium scale enterprise or SMEs. So right now we open partnership with any SME to create or co-brand their product with us under under Lamonilo. What we want to share with you is we Lamonilo have a really great abil ability to market, uh, to give you insights on packaging, to give you insights uh, on suppliers. Uh, and we also have a very interesting, very sexy terms of payment for any SME. And if you are interested to co-brand and create a product together with Lemonilo under Lemonilo brand, please contact partnership at lemonilo.com. Thank you. Thank you. I think we have a question again from Untan. Untan? Or I just say, or you want to speak? And tell your questions. Untan? Yeah. Okay. No one speak. Okay. The question from Untan is how to be able to compete if we sell the same product with the competitors? Okay. Yeah. Well, that's for me, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I think it's for Sinta. Okay, so how to be able to compete if we sell the same products with competitors? Don't sell the same products with your competitors. Give different values. So that's a very simple um, oversimplification answer of any uh, anything or entrepreneurship per se. Okay, so if the, so execution is everything, right? So when you launch a product, don't create something that's already existed. So in Lamonilo. Uh, we never launch a product if we are not able to create added value. So we don't just want to copy existing products. We want to be able to give our users better products, healthier, affordable, and practical, but needs to be able to give the right value, better value, otherwise it's not gonna be launched. Okay, thank you. And is there any questions from American Corners? from UMY or UNAT or UNTAN? No? Okay, one more question from the, from the audience. Yes. Neas, yeah. Okay. Oh, 
hello, my name is Neas. Oh, I want to ask to both of you that to be a social entrepreneur is not easy, and it's not a lot of process and a lot, a lot of things happen in our own life. So uh, I want to ask that uh, what is this inspired you uh, to do, keep going and keep doing what you are doing right now? Thank you. Okay, how to be persistent. Yeah. Okay, so I think passion. So we we discuss about this before, right? Uh, so if I think it's very difficult to keep doing something that you don't like. So I uh, the reason the three of us started La Monilo is because we know this is something that we are very passionate about. We know the entrepreneurship journey is a long one. It's not a sprint, it's a marathon. It's a difficult one. Uh, it's almost impossible if you don't do it 100%. A lot of people do it 100% and they are not successful yet. Uh, so if you know that the road uh, in front of you, is, uh, it's going to be something that difficult, please choose something that you're excited about. Please choose something that you want to solve. You want to be able to solve. Uh, that question comes down to each individual. Uh, how to find um, passion uh, really, of course, again, depends on you. How to be persistent. Come back to whether you're passionate about it or not. If you're passionate about it, you're going to keep doing it, doing it, doing it until you, get, until you reach your goal. If you're not passionate enough, then you're going to stop. I think it's very simple. I think that's everything. Something you love. And then find something you love, find something you're passionate about, make it your life goal to solve it. That's it. Uh, if I may add a bit. Yeah, right? okay. So Alpha Jugnis now is uh, in the fourth year. We have been growing together as well with our mm -hmm. entrepreneurs. As well as we have seen a lot of successful entrepreneurs have going to from one stake to next stake, not to be the unicorn stake. I think if I would like to add one thing that you should think as an entrepreneur is don't stop grow. Because we are in our we as a VC we are also in the business to you know to see to empower people uh, to empower the entrepreneur to grow and entrepreneurs are expected to uh, uh, grow sustainable and and uh, with the competition with a lot of even even if you are in the good situation uh, it will attract unnecessary attention the challenge is always there so don't stop grow because uh, we serve a bigger more uh, stakeholder as well so we should keep going and don't stop grow. Okay. One more question. We still have two minutes left. A uh, question from UMY, American Corners from UMY. How do you maintain Lemonilo's name among health enthusiast customers? Okay, so how do we maintain Lemonilo? So first, um, it's something to take um, your position from zero to one, and it's a different case to maintain it as number one, right? So we are not yet number one, we believe. We're just starting. Um, so how do you build brand awareness? How do you maintain that awareness? I think you need to stay relevant. First, you need to be able to create value. Uh, by that value, uh, more people will find you and more people will, will relate to you. But you need to stay relevant. Um, so there are a lot of companies in the world who have been successful and they stop being relevant and they just vanish from the, from, from the earth. Um, so... So to maintain a company, to maintain a brand, means that you need to stay relevant. You need to invest uh, your money in the right place. Uh, need to be able to deliver, keep on delivering value. So that's it. Okay, thank you. Please give a round of applause for all the speakers. It was a very amazing discussion today. And uh, as I said before, we have a quiz uh, for you who could answer the question correctly. You'll get the exclusive merchandise from us. Okay, uh, if you know the answer, please raise your hand and uh, say your name clearly, loudly, and your answer correctly. Okay, questions number one. Uh, I want Sinta to correct the answer, right? Who's the name of the founder and co-founder of Lemonilo? Okay, okay, yes, over there. 
please. Is there any microphone? Okay, open your notes. <laughs> okay. Hello. The name is Sinta Fauzia. Okay, right. There's three co-founders. Oh. Okay. I don't know. Okay, unfortunately. Okay, wait, wait, sorry, wait. so the name is Ronald Vijaya, Johannes, and Sinta and Rufausia. Yay! Yay. Okay. <laughs> Correct. Okay. Open your notes. <laughs> Question number two. Who knows three products of Lemonilo? Okay. Who knows? Three products of Lemonilo. Who? Who's gonna answer? Yeah. Hi, I'm Leonda. Um, the products are ramen, um, seasoning powder, and cold brew. Is it right? Is it right? Yay! Congratulations! Okay, we still have a lot of questions for quizzes. Who are the first customers of Lemonilo? Who? Yeah. Okay, wait, wait, the microphone. Yeah, the first customer of Lemonilos. Urban woman, huh? and then overweight people, and huh? people with diabetes. Is it right? Yay, thank you. What's your name? What's your name? Sorry. My name is Uut. Okay. Do you want more questions <laughs> and quizzes? Okay. Uh, next questions. How Lemonilo meet Alpha GWC Ventures? Yes. Yes. The man over there. Yeah. Uh, through a friend, and she asked to meeting and asked to mentorship. Okay. Is it right? Yay! Congratulations. Okay. Last questions, but not least. How Lemonilos maximize the use of technology? Okay, who wants to answer the questions? Corners, corners. American corners. Corners, corners. Okay, how Lemonilos maximize the use of technology? Can you answer the questions? <laughs> okay, we are lack of time. Okay, uh, I'll say to, to the audience here. You want to answer? No? No? How the monitor maximize the use of it's very easy. Yeah, they're way up there. They try uh, several social media, TV commercials, TikTok, and everything. And uh. they use the data based on it. And as well, they put it in their website. So uh, they knew uh, each of the respondents' comments or inputs on the products. Okay, is it right? Sound. Pass? Or you can answer? Yeah, sure. It's okay. Yeah, congratulations. You maximize with the e-commerce, right? Yeah. Okay, uh, everyone, thank you so much for the discussions today. Uh, I'd like to invite all of the speakers and you will give the token of appreciation that will be given by Pak Ben. Mr. Ben? Yeah. Could you please give the token of appreciation to all of the amazing speakers?
Okay, uh, everyone, I'd like to remind you to fill the worksheet uh, available uh, on the link. Yes? Okay, after this, after this. Uh, fill the worksheet as your business exercise. If you have no idea how to complete it, uh, we'll give you the example. You can get it through campaign app chat or you can, or you can ask uh, our friends out there. We'll still have the other episode of coaching classes. Uh, don't miss it, guys. Uh, we'll have the coaching class with Alpha GWC Ventures featuring Hara, Tani Hub, and Stoko. And don't forget to join YCSE 2.0 and how to apply. Okay, uh, would like to share how to apply this amazing program. Okay. Okay. Okay, we have a series of coaching classes with uh, Hara, Tani Hub, and Stoko. And uh, we'll encourage you to apply for this program. How to apply? Register to be YCLE member. Submit your initiative through campaign app. Complete your profile. Join campaign Be Sociopreneur. Start your campaign and add an update, share your campaign page, and yeah, you're, you're ready an applicant. If you want to have a lot uh, more questions about this program, you can ask our friends out there. Okay, uh, that's all our coaching class today. It's a very amazing discussion, and thank you so much. I'll give it back to the E. Okay, give another round of applause for our speakers and also moderator today. And I would like to invite again uh, both of our speakers and also Pa Bennett and also Pa William to take a picture together with all of the audience from Amcor. Okay, please, uh, yeah, in the middle. And thank you guys for coming. Hope to see you guys at another Ad America event. Bye. Have a great afternoon, everyone.